Thank you, <coughs> Reni, for the opportunity and the time uh, to give a talk in this uh, uh, bright morning today. Uh, good morning to all panelists, Pa Handoko, Pa Hendro, and also Dr. Mitchell from US, Dr. Cross from Germany, Dr. Belder, for, Belder from Netherlands, and Dr. Hennehu uh, from Italy. Right. Um, it must be a very early morning over there. Uh, thank you for joining us here uh, in Indonesia. Uh, for start, I have to take a little time to wear my shirt first. So I usually wear this shirt during my presentation so to give everyone a bit of a context uh, of what <coughs> uh, what I'm talking going to talk about uh, today. So I I have a complete slides, uh, but I will be only showing several of those slides uh, this morning. Uh, the link is already in the chat box. So let me share my screen now. Can you all see my screen? Okay, thank you. Uh, the title of my talk will be this. The Resilience in Academic and uh, Scholarly Publishing in Indonesia especially but uh, I think the content of my talk here is very much relevant to, to many countries, uh, for instance, uh, Indonesia, uh, uh, and of course Indonesia, right? And uh, the example of another country that uh, relevant to my talk is India, and then Africa. I have many uh, occasions in uh, discussion with a fellow researcher from Africa and India and all of the uh, researchers have the same uh, problem with what we have here in Indonesia. So I will begin my talk with this uh, picture. So my background is geology. I work on hydrology mainly, mainly but I have a little uh, if I knew about the library and libra library science when I uh, graduate from my high school, I would uh, choose the uh, the major for my higher education. Yeah? So uh, I just realized that. So I make this picture. So librarian is the guardian of knowledge. Uh, so. This is how I, I think about the librarian. So uh, they all, uh, the function is as provider, provider of availability of information, access to information, dissemination to information, and also the maintainer, right? Uh, they keep the sustainability of the flowing of the uh, information and the searchability as well and also the accessibility. They maintain uh, those three aspects in, in science disseminations. And also uh, the, the other important role would be to advocate, uh, to, to explain, to influence people and to foster uh, the, the awareness to share information where data is part of the information nowadays. So how can we uh, build a resilience in academic publishing? Uh, earlier, Pa Handoko has had mentioned about uh, some issues we, we face in, in trying to implementing uh, open science in Indonesia. Uh, so I came up with this, with this uh, picture to summarize my thoughts and also 
uh, several uh, thoughts from our colleagues in the uh, Good Science Indonesia group and Open Science Indonesia group. So how to build this resilience? Uh, first is we have to scale small. What do I mean with scaling small is how to keep the, the infrastructure uh, minimize, yeah, minimize uh, according to our needs, right? So everything will be within our reach. So no, we, we don't have to uh, invite people from our outside of our uh, ecosystem, especially those with with profit background, to 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 help us, right? And we try to minimize the operations, and uh, hopefully we have we will have less effort to do that. And the other one is color led. So, uh, in the beginning of uh, the development of science, uh, scholars will will uh, was the, the initiator of, of science, right? But as time goes by, and then many people have uh, many different kinds of facets of interest and also for profit interest and then uh, right now the the world is kind of the scientific world is kind of turning upside down right so we as the initiator as the producer of science is now very uh, rely rely ourselves uh, much to the the commercial uh, infrastructure whereas they in, in this case, their, their role is the, uh, it, I, I can say their role would be, would be the, the packaging, in the packaging department, right? We are the producer, we produce science, and uh, the publish, publishing uh, entities is kind of the working on the packaging uh, department. So the basic, uh, the basic principle is science as public goods and then we have to uh, grow our network right grow our alliance vertically and horizontally uh, so we can distribute infrastructure right uh, in this case uh, LIPI ha has started a very good initiative uh, to try to help the uh, institution, research institution, university who are uh, who cannot uh, maintain a server or don't have a server currently. So uh, DDI Lippi is helping them by setting setting up a very good and very stable environment. And also uh, Rin Archive, uh, the preprint server of Indonesia, is using the service. Thank you, Pak Hendro, Pak Handoko, for that. So if we have a distributed infrastructure, and then we will have a, we will have a distributed skills. So every we don't as, expect uh, someone to know everything, but uh, we have different kinds of people know know uh, 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 very uh, good about uh, their bits, and then we can uh, communicate. Uh, to join uh, skills to run the infrastructure and also distributed funding. Here's a question mark here because uh, mainly in in Indonesia and also I think in India and also in most African countries, the funding related to science is mostly coming from the government, right? So I think the funding uh, is should be centralized in in this case uh, at the moment. But distributed funding is, I think, it was better to the system, and then also uh, this uh, motivation is very important. Non-profit uh, uh, motivation is is very very important in in this case. So preferably preferably uh, for for science, uh, it's better to be funded by the government or other non-profit entities rather than we rely on the infrastructure uh, supported by commercial uh, infrastructures so uh, i think we we have 
we have to be we have to define the healthier model future healthier model than than what we have today so uh, this is kind of the end of my my uh, slide so, uh, and then i try to move back why we need this so uh, if this was me in the early uh, from the early start of my career i have to i have to choose i always have to choose whether i have to choose the right way right um, going non-profit going uh, science for public goods things and all at the same time there there is a left left option left choice here which is it's kind of merit based uh, and then this is what the administration needs me to do to support the university ranking or national level ranking so every every researcher uh, will have this situation from the early stage of uh, their career and also we have this uh, message of prestige passing down from senior researcher to a junior researcher this is uh, me right this is most of us here and the message is to try to build this wall i call it the, the digital digital new Berlin walls of prestige. So the wall of prestige is built by ourselves, and then at the end, uh, we also complain about it, right? And then uh, this is the kind of uh, common uh, common uh, common flow uh, from uh, of science from the problems in community, and then. Uh, we asked for funding from the government in a laboratory and then we face these constraints, this barrier about access, equipment and skills and, and then after we done with this analysis we have to uh, make the reports to the government or to the funders and then we have to publish it and when we pu publish it we only uh, think about this, this uh, rank of journals right we we are uh, asked we are requested to to submit to the top journals here and also we have this another instrument of quality in indonesia and also in in uh, most of the global south countries we have web of science scopus and also the other indexing that that uh, with our regulation we put those indexing as the control of quality and then uh, if we want to uh, publish it as open access, we also have another another issue on the APC, uh, very very high APC to hit to publish uh, to top journals here. And once we have published it, and then yay, of course. And then uh, the 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 last thing is we have to maintain a good track of. Uh, citations uh, some of citations to to get the incentive so it's all about uh, personal glory I think right so with those uh, large uh, burden so many burden we are currently here we are on a balloon we have all the tools but we also have this uh, burden like uh, university ranking, journal impact factor, in age index, indexing. So we, we we can just kind of floating above above these cars and motorcycles and also these horses. We kind of uh, only float uh, above the, the the cars uh, where where we should be flying up there. If if we don't have this uh, many burdens, we we could be flying up here. Right? So, but everyone uh, does not realize this condition, right? Everything is about this, the burden of science. And then what we have here is kind of the, the um, uh, chain reactions, where this is my interview with, with Stefania Ivasensko from Open Science TV. We, do, we did the interview, I think, uh, three months ago. Uh, it will be 
live, live show in, in YouTube in, in a few weeks. So this is what happened. This is the, the nation, the nation, it could be Indonesia, it could be India, it could be African country. Uh, we, we, we deal, we have negotiations to this person who, who is, uh, they have this uh, promise to give this in return, which, which is mostly about prestige, right? And then this this uh, person, which represent a country, uh, bring the whole fleet of of uh, science of assets in the negotiation, so they can get this, right? So we we kind of forget this human value of of science and also the playful side of science, right? So this is uh, uh, the, the the summary of what we have here so this is indonesia it could be uh, another country so the the most part who spend money the most is the country right the state they they fund the research they also give the publishing fund for apc for open access uh, uh publish publishing schema and then we also they also give money for incentives so so uh, the country uh, spends most of the money, but the publisher who received uh, the most uh, benefit, right, financial benefit. So this is kind of summarized the, the, my talk here. This is the Berlin Wall. We have this start of science. We have uh, the launch of archive here. And then this is the ra ra start of open access movement. And then we kind of have this uh, river. Uh, at one side we have predatory, predatory journals and, and at one side we have commercial publishers. Um, and then we also hit this Berlin wall of prestige, which I, which I shown earlier. Uh, and then this wall kind of uh, build a digital divide between global north and global south and we don't have uh, any idea uh, where we, where we would finish right so what we need is only human values right to open up this gate of science only human values um, nothing else yeah? human values that science is public goods and we should do science for the society it's, it's, it's very very easy to, to, to do but the problem is uh, there are many people with, with so many facets of interest right so the, the solution is not the technical solution but uh, it's a social solution or non-technical solution that we need so this is uh, the end of my presentations uh, we also uh, would like to invite you to read this piece in Indonesian language that is published last week and then this is the informal translation uh, in English of, of the piece uh, but but the conversation is try to release the formal translation uh, by the end of this week so thank you very much so at the end open science is just science done right thank you very much uh but for the time